Hello and thanks for joining us. I'm Maria Soreo. You are watching Around the Peninsula and joining me in studio today is the President and CEO of the Palos Verdes Peninsula Chamber of Commerce, Ms. Eileen Hupp. And joining us also is Vakash Modi, who is one of the participants in the Young Entrepreneurs Program. Welcome, yeah. both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being here today. Now, Eileen, tell us a little bit about the program. I know it's um, the, the Chamber sponsors it. Mm -hmm. And is this the second year that you've done it? Yes, okay. absolutely, Maria. Thank you for asking. This is the second year that we've completed the Young Entrepreneurs Program. Um, it's a groundbreaking innovative program for 6th through 12th grade local students where they actually create and launch their own business. And how did you sort of get the idea to do this? Because I know they do it nationwide. Absolutely. Okay. So um, about four years ago when I first got to the Chamber of Commerce as CEO, um, I heard about this program. It was started at the University of Rochester in their graduate school of business about 11 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I thought this is perfect for our community because mm -hmm. there's nothing like it, you know, in any of our schools. Um, and so it took me a couple years to get it up and running but we are so excited we've had about 40 kids go through the program over the last two years and it's of course just a joy to be able to work with these very talented and motivated and smart kids yeah and I've met mm -hmm. some other ones Vakash mm -hmm. like yourself mm -hmm. and everybody is super excited and and really you know really into the business aspect of creating something um, which I think is amazing mm -hmm. uh, in the last two years that you've had it what, it what were the biggest differences that you noticed from this this year to last year well, we doubled the program this year. Wow. <laughs> okay. So it's much bigger. So that kind of made a difference. Yeah. And um, uh, so we had twice as many students. We ran two classes. Um, and I think, you know, the first year it was really pedal to the metal, just rolling out the program and mm -hmm. understanding the curriculum. The program goes for six months. So the students start in um, October or early November, and we meet with them weekly for three hours um, every week through uh, June. So it's a huge time commitment on their part as well as on the Chamber of Commerce's part, we bring in our business leaders mm -hmm. and volunteers from the community to help as instructors, as guest speakers, as business mentors, mm -hmm. all of that. But the chamber obviously, you know, coordinates and manages the entire program. And I want to talk a little bit about that too, mm -hmm. because I know a lot of people from the community, you know, yes. came in to, to help out. Now, mm -hmm. tell us about your end of the, this. How did you hear about it to get involved? Yeah, so I heard it. I heard about it through my school, and I was always pretty passionate about business. I always wanted to do something with business. So okay. once the opportunity came up, I was super excited. And now you're going to be a junior at Chadwick, is I that am. right? Mm -hmm. And you play soccer. You're mm -hmm. very involved in school. Yeah, I am. Okay. Yeah. And, and how did you sort of become involved in, in business? Uh, my dad's been in business his whole life, and he's pretty much I kind of been my mentor, and he's helped me a lot. And then the YEA program helped really help me start a business, and then carry it through. And what was it like when you first went into the program? What kind of things did you learn? What, what was kind of the, the curriculum? The curriculum, they really start off from the beginning. So you start off like kind of just thinking about different ideas mm -hmm. that you could use for your business. And then they really help you start from that point and take it all the way to the end. Everything with like developing a business plan, uh, the legal work, getting the website up and running, everything uh, along those lines. And then were you also brainstorming with fellow students and people in the community as well? Yeah, definitely. They brought in a lot of really amazing business leaders who really, they were there to help us. And there was a lot of collaboration with our fellow students. Interesting. Now, do, I'm, I'm not going to give away what your um, what your business is, mm -hmm. but did you have an idea in the beginning what you wanted to do, or did it kind of um, come to you after a period of time? It definitely came to me after a period of time, okay. after the questions that they asked us. Those really provoked me, like, getting to think about some ideas. Okay. Yeah. And Eileen, let's go back to talking about yes. the people in the mm -hmm. community that participated mm -hmm. to help out the students. Um, well, we had everyone from attorneys, bankers, um, many entrepreneurs, some active, some retired, uh, technology people, graphic designers. Um, you know, we just put out the call throughout the chamber and the community for people to help. Um, and we definitely will be looking for similar volunteers <laughs> yes. going forward. Yes, absolutely. It's amazing mm -hmm. because when you think about the ideas that come to you, and I think so many people have great ideas for businesses mm -hmm. and they never really cultivate them. So to have an opportunity to kind of be with other people and, and really think about what you might want to do is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever have an idea for a business when you were growing up? 
Oh my gosh, that was a long time ago. <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> Let me think about that. A couple of months ago. I you mean. know, I'm not sure I really did because honestly, growing up, I was all focused on um, sciences and scientific research. So okay. it really wasn't until um, I got to college and, and discovered economics and then went on for an MBA at University of Chicago that I got involved in business. So I really didn't didn't think of one. No, that's a really good question. What, what, was, so, what do you think mm, was the yeah, biggest mm -hmm. challenge in the, in the, the program? Uh, the biggest challenge is definitely coming up with the idea. Okay. Um, yeah. 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 And and did everybody sort of go through the same process then in you know coming up with their with their ideas or? Yeah. So pretty much the first few lessons we just pretty much um, thought of ideas and wrote them down on a huge whiteboard and then from there everyone was had like hundred ideas that we all had to narrow down. But what do you yeah. think you learned the most from it or from maybe one person that was was in the the program with you? The thing I probably learned the most about was definitely like perseverance. Like mm. some ideas are going to fail, some are going to be successful. So you can't just rely on like just one idea, um, and just like keep going even if one idea fails. Very yeah. true. Very true. And mm -hmm. this program, you said mm -hmm. it doubled, and I know that there are different age groups. How right. do you sort of differentiate that? Okay. Well, that's a really great question as well, Maria. So it's for sixth through twelfth graders, and we don't. They're all in class together. Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, because it's it, and I have to tell you, with three kids of my own, at first I was like, gee, how is that going to yeah. work? Yeah. You know, <laughs> but it it, it really, and I would be interesting to hear if Bakash thinks the same because you were mm -hmm. you know you're in the class, but yeah. I really felt that after a few weeks, everybody is on equal footing because at the end of the day. Our mindset, Maria, is to treat the students as entrepreneurs who happen to be students, mm. not students mm -hmm. who want to be entrepreneurs. So we call them CEOs, we call them entrepreneurs, and you know, the sixth grader or the seventh grader might have an incredible idea and really developing, you know, and develop it. And so they're on equal footing. It's 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 across the board. Everybody's the same. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. how did you select the participants? Okay. Because I'm sure there was a lot of people that wanted to do this. There are, and that's. That's also a great question. So there's an application process, and mm -hmm. um, we will be starting to accept applications um, in August. Um, they will, they're on the Chamber website now, I believe. Okay. So people can go on and click the website, or if they'd like to get a hard copy, they can stop by the Chamber, or we can you know, email it to them, whatever, if they'd like a soft copy. They have to complete an application, write some essays, send in their transcript, get a letter of recommendation, and then come in for an interview. Wow. So because we really want, it's a big commitment of time, and we really want kids that are going to be able to work through it and stick with it. And as Bakash said, it requires perseverance. Right. Because I think what this program teaches, besides the fact of starting a business, um, and you can also start a nonprofit, by the way, mm -hmm. as well. Wow. But what the students are really learning are life skills that no matter what career they choose, whether they're going to be attorneys or doctors or teachers or nurses, um, it teaches them perseverance. It teaches them that it's okay to fail because mm -hmm. how many times entrepreneurs many fail times. all the time? Yes. Um, they have to get up and make presentations. We talk about you know how to interview with people how to reach out to people they learn to make you know phone calls if they need to to, mm -hmm. to you know connect with a supplier or a manufacturer so they're getting skills that will help them um, even analytical skills that will help them no matter what they do mm -hmm. so um, with all of that we're really looking for students who are creative who really are passionate about starting a business or a nonprofit and if they're motivated and smart we can do the rest Okay, so with school and everything else, how did you balance all this? I have to ask. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> Sports, <laughs> school, business. Yeah, sophomore year. Um, it was a lot of work, but I mean, definitely it was something I was passionate about, like starting my business. So I never really saw it as, oh, it's a chore I have to do. Okay. I always like, in my free time, that would be what I would go to to do because it was so much fun. You didn't even realize you were doing the work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, so do you sort of see yourself now after you've been through this process of um, maybe being a more open thinker to things um, because now you can kind of pull things out and go, maybe this will work, maybe that will work. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Every day I'm thinking <laughs> of, oh man, I can make that a new idea. Yeah. I'm always coming mm -hmm. up with new ideas and like really keeping an open mind about new uh, possibilities. That sounds great. Okay. Well, we want, I know we all want to hear and see Vakash's idea. So we're going to take a break and we'll be right back. You're watching Around the Peninsula. to be bigger than life to be a good dad. 
you just need to spend time with your kids. It takes a man to be a dad. We are back and now we're going to turn it over to Vikash who's going to give us an overview of his business plan. Hi, my name is Vikash Modi and I'm the founder and CEO of Hire High. Are you a parent who has been frustrated because you could not find any help for your kids? Or are you a talented high schooler who wants to use those talents to make money? I know I am and if you answered yes to either question then Hire High is for you. What is Hire High? Hire High is the Uber of the jobs marketplace. Hire High is a next generation service that empowers high school students to pursue their passions and careers while helping anyone in their community with sports lessons, music lessons, or tutoring for their kids. The process is simple. First, high schoolers can directly sign up through our platform and create a profile listing the services they wish to, wish to offer. Then, a confirmation email is sent to their parents that validates that their parents know they are signing up for our service. Then, any other member of the community can log on, create a profile, and begin hiring these students, and all transactions will be completed directly through our platform. Additionally, after each transaction, the high schooler can choose a local school district for 10% of our commission to be given back to. This is a screenshot of our website and it is currently in the final phase of development and this is another screenshot that shows some of the services that will be listed on our platform. There are 10 main high schools we will be initially targeting in the South Bay and over 18,000 students attend these 10 schools. We plan to engage roughly 25% or 4,500 students. There are over 1,300 high schools in California and over 5,800 elementary schools. And through our duplication model, we hope to eventually convert these 4,500 students to 4.5 million. But don't take it from me, take it from him. Kids are ecstatic with the opportunity to be able to use their passions and interests to make money. Some of our short-term business goals include development of a fully functioning website as well as expansion of our clientele base large enough so that we can expand to the beach cities by the beginning of 2016. One of our long-term business goals is duplication of our model in other regions of the United States. Additionally, by July of 2016, we will, we will have recorded 20,000 hours through our platform, which is equivalent to $100,000 net profit. There are three main competitors to Hire High, which are Wiseant, Elance, and TaskRabbit. They are all high quality services that utilize the shared economy and they take various commissions from their transactions. What distinguishes us and gives us an advantage is our utilization of high schoolers along with our ability to give money back to our high schools after each transaction. Our initial marketing will occur by directly contacting high schoolers and parents of middle and elementary school students and getting them to sign up. After that, we will rely heavily upon word of mouth and social media campaigns to further expand our reach. Since I last presented at our local investment panel and secured funding, we have made tremendous progress towards our short-term and long-term goals. Our progress has included securing of the relevant domain names as well as receiving a very positive feedback from local school administrators and high schoolers. Additionally, we have formed an LLC and created an advisory board along with hiring a development team of four people and building a platform that is currently in the final phase of development. I use Hire High to teach people how to sing. For Hire High, I'm able to offer my hockey tra training program for the youth and I'm also allowed to market myself and my business. Thank you for your time and consideration of Hire High where education works, and I hope to see you signed up soon. Cinderella found the pet that fits her perfectly. Tiana gave her pet the royal treatment. Belle found beauty where no one else did. And you can too. Share your heart. Share your love. Bring home your forever friend. Make a shelter pet part of your world. Happily Ever After begins at theshelterpetproject.org. And I would like to thank both of my guests, Vakash Modi and Eileen Hupp, for being here today. And thank you so much for sharing your presentation. Yeah, thank you for having me. Very awesome. Thank you, Eileen. I'm sure thank we you. will see you again soon. And that will do it for this episode of Around the Peninsula. I'm Maria Sorreo, and we'll see you next time.